former envoy to the Middle East by name of Dennis Ross as a kind of consultant. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have people from government or from uh, think tanks who are consultants to who you try out storylines or you help to give you any kind of insight or direction? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, if there's someone that Joel or Bob or Howard talk to uh, yeah. in their own, uh, then that's something that I'm not aware of. No. Uh, I think this is really... I mean, and you have to remember that 24 was really born out of this idea, this fantasy of, of how do you create a real-time show and, and then the idea of CTU and, and, and f building the show around a character that did this, we, they were trying to figure out how to justify keeping a character up for 24 hours. Yeah. And this was the one line of work that they could do. And we had shot half a season before the terrible events of 9-11. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the show then kind of took on a whole nother spin uh, because terrorism... Uh, was something that just became a part of our lives. Uh, and so they weren't, s their desire was never to, to kind of follow the news and, and do what was happening in the news. That was just kind of an awful thing that just happened. Uh, their desire was always to just kind of, in broad strokes, use this character and use these situations to accent their positions, their thoughts, their ideas of what they think is happening in the world. In the end, television series, I assume, are successful because, A, good writing, good acting, but there has to be a central character that people find fascinating. Mm -hmm. They are curious about. They have an investment in him. What right. is it about Bauer, you think? Nothing's for free. He loses. He can save the president and he can save his daughter, but he loses his wife. Uh, I think that they have done such a beautiful job in the writing, uh, in balancing him out. Uh, he can be incredibly proficient and have the responsibilities of the world on his shoulder, and he can't handle a 16-year-old girl. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a, I, I buy that. I understand that. Uh, I can walk off to a set, work 14 hours, and have people tell me what a fantastic performance. And I can come home to a 14-year-old daughter and... I, I don't understand what's wrong, honey. I, explain that to me again. And I, I love that dichotomy. And I think people can really relate to that. And he's not a perfect guy. He's, you know, he doesn't deal with all of the situations in a, in, in a politically correct way. And I think people responded to that as well. Was the torture thing, is, I mean, because we've had issues of torture it's in America. It's a huge issue. I mean, has it become for, a bigger issue? For me, on a personal level, I think torture is wrong, and I think it's absolutely... Uh, someone was explaining to me why they thought Abu Ghraib, you know, this justification that if you're going to fight terrorism, this is how you have to do it, and I think that's wrong. I think you have to absolutely... If you're going to go and show people that there is a better way and you're going to teach them about democracy, you have to, you have to follow that all the way down the line. Mm -hmm. That's my personal view. In the context of a show that we've made, and that's entertainment, I certainly understand the visceral reaction of... And I had it after 9-11. I wanted to get someone. Sure. You know, it's a natural reaction. And you have to take a big, deep breath and sit back and try and figure out why things have happened the way they have and what, what the smart thing to do is. Jack Bauer has, is constantly having a visceral reaction to things and, and reacting uh, in a very spontaneous way from a very emotional place. Yeah, let me go down that road. That's interesting because in Munich, again, just to make a reference to it, this is based on the true story. Uh, uh, they use the, what movies often do. You know, this story is based on, uh, takes, takes its storyline from real events. In this mm -hmm. case, Munich and the fact that uh, books have been written about Israeli assassin teams that went out mm -hmm. to trace down the people that had something to yeah, do. They finally with ran me. in trouble in Holland. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, in this case, the principal Mossad agent, uh, who have, first of all has disavowed that he's Mossad, not, but has ambivalence about it. Does Jack have ambivalence about what he does, or and and simply? Ab absolutely, absolutely. He he will react in this visceral reaction, and he will have this uh, explosive. Uh, moment. Uh, one of my favorite things in, in all of the seasons was a scene that he had in a pickup truck where he just starts to cry yeah. at the yeah. end of one of those days and the weight of what he not only was responsible for but the way with which he carries some of the things out absolutely have to bother him. Uh, in the last episode, and shooting a colleague in order to... That, well certainly that, but I think also some of, some of the tactics that he has to use in order to get information in a very specific time frame. 
generally 10, 15, 20 minutes, I need this information or this person is going to die. Um, but we've tried to incorporate the fact that that has to tear you apart. I certainly know with police officers uh, that are working, you know, the harder areas in the inner cities, mm. uh, their lives get ruined after a time. Uh, they see so much. They see the worst of what people can do and the worst of what people can become. Uh, and that's an incredible sacrifice. Uh, I think teachers have done that as well. I think teachers uh, have gone into certain schools and certain areas with all of the great hope in the world and come out the other end just tired and bitter and angry. Yeah. Uh, and I think... And burned out in some cases. Jack Bauer is always on that edge of, of becoming that and trying to fight that and all of those things. So absolutely, I think he has a problem with a lot of the things he, that he does. And I think that that might be one of the things that an audience is also identifying with him as a character. Because he is engaged in this internal debate. Absolutely. Dialogue. And I think we all are on some degree. Yeah, I do too. The, the interesting thing too is that when you create a character, you have a script to go with and you have acting skills to go with. Did anything else inform you in terms of creating the character and from year to year to year? Well, from year to year to year, absolutely, because we love making the first season so much, and everything else has been motivated by fear. <laughs> I don't want to lose well, my it, job. It, it actually gets harder. I mean, first of all, you say this is the best thing you've ever had, and you've learned it more is, than yeah. any other project you've ever been involved in. Well, from film to film, you get to make broad choices. Uh, I can do one film where I would play a character like Jack Bauer. The next film, uh, I could play a man dying of AIDS and really make two very strong character choices that are very diverse and very different. What I've learned so much as an actor is that from season to season to season, instead of making two large choices uh, to change the character around, because it's the same character, I have to make 15 to 20 small choices that will show the impact of last season in the mm -hmm. character, uh, differences, uh, just minutia. Mm -hmm. It was not a way that I had ever thought of work as an actor. Um, it's taught me an amazing amount uh, that it, the other thing that I've learned more about is, is that in many cases it doesn't matter exactly what Jack Bauer is saying, as long as there's an energy. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always made this joke, uh, you know, a normal person would say, can I have a glass of water? Yeah. And after episode two, Jack Bauer says, can I have a glass of water? <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. yeah. It's yeah, not, but, uh, no one cares if he's asking he's for a glass speed. of water, he's but he has speed. to be moving at that speed and that energy. And, and I have to believe at everything in that energy, otherwise yeah. the audience won't be able to. And, and so I just started working on just kind of much smaller levels uh, as an actor because of this series and because of the requirements of this series in a way that I had never done before. Is there any reason to believe that Jack Bauer is not a f feature film ongoing character in the same way that James Bond is a feature film ongoing character or are some of the characters created by Tom Clancy? Mm -hmm. It's something that we've talked about and it's something that I would love to be a part of if, if that actually comes to fruition. I think It ought to be easy now though, you, you have defined the character. You would think. Yeah, you would. You but would but it's not true, you don't think or not? Um, it, you know, it, the film business, it requires a lot of people to agree. You've said before that you like this year because it harks back to the first year. Yes. What do you mean by that? The first year really took the genre of the thriller and stayed true to it. You had Nina was the mole. You had, you, uh, there was, it was more about intrigue than action. Yeah. Uh, I think season five has been our best effort uh, to date, to balance the action, which I think... John Kassar and our directors and our crew do incredibly well. Uh, but to really bring back that intrigue and who's actually working for who. Is that easier or harder? It's really Just hard different. for the writers. Really? 